The water, Rawat Kadash. The water, Kai. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All praises to Ahaya Kasid. That's all praises to Anoki Sid. That's all praises to the great I Am loving kindness. Bahashim Yeshaya. Bahashim Matsa, the Lamb. In the name of the Hamasiach, the Messiah, Shalom family. This is little son Sabal Nabaya. Again, family, thank you. Thank you for the overwhelming love and support. Many of you reached out and showed love, and I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Family, last week, last week we talked about the fallen watcher, 
Asael or Azazel, depending on which translation you're reading. We talked about that fallen watcher and how he was over such things as makeup and warfare. We talked about how it is he who is over weapons and weaponry. Remember, there is a distinction between weapons and tools. Now, I am not going to go back over that information during this lesson. However, I do want to bring something to your attention. For many of you, this will simply be reminding you of something that was brought to your attention quite a while back. How many of you are familiar with the name Rakim Balogun? There is an excellent short documentary on the subject. I'm going to place I'm going to place the link to that documentary on YouTube in the comments or maybe I'll place it in the description of this video so you guys can check that out on your own time. Definitely give it a watch. What I am going to do is I'm going to read you some of the article that was published in The Guardian. I'm going to post the link also to this article in case any of you want to read along with me. I am reading this so you can understand that even if, even if you do not agree with the scriptures and the things that I brought out in the last lesson, then I want you to look at this story and I want you to see what can happen when a community bands together and they have weapons. You have to remember that you don't live in the world alone. And if you're out on social media and you are brandishing these weapons in your pictures, understand that you are garnering the attention of anyone who could possibly perceive you as a threat. So let's go ahead and read a little bit of this article. It says, Rakeem Balogun thought, or maybe it's Rackham. Rackham or Rakeem, I'm not really sure. Anyway, Rackham Balogun thought he was dreaming when armed agents in tactical gear stormed his apartment. Startled awake by a large crash and officer screaming commands, he soon realized his nightmare was real, and he and his 15-year-old son were forced outside of their Dallas home wearing only underwear. Handcuffed and shaking in the cold wind, Balogun thought a misunderstanding must have led the FBI to his door on 12 December 2017. The father of three said he was shocked to later learn that agents investigating domestic terrorism had been monitoring him for years and were arresting him that day in part because of his Facebook post criticizing police. It's tyranny at its finest, said Balogun, 34. I have not been doing anything illegal for them to have surveillance on me. I have not hurt anyone or threatened anyone. Balogun spoke to The Guardian this week in his first interview since he was released from prison after five months locked up and denied bail while U.S. attorneys tried and failed to prosecute him, accusing him of being a threat to law enforcement and an illegal gun owner. Balogun, who lost his home and more while incarcerated, is believed to be the first person targeted and prosecuted under a secretive U.S. surveillance effort to track so-called black identity extremists. In a leaked August 2017 report, from FBI's Domestic Terrorism Analysis, Analysis Unit, officials claimed that there had been a resurgence in ideologically motivated violent criminal activity stemming from African Americans. 
perceptions of police brutality. The the counterterrorism assessment provided minimal data or evidence of threats against police, but discussed a few isolated incidents, notably the case of Micah Johnson, who killed five officers in Texas. The report sparked backlash from civil rights groups and some Democrats who feared the government would use the broad designation to prosecute activists and groups like Black Lives Matter. Balogun, who was working full-time for an IT company when he was arrested, has long been an activist, co-founding Guerrilla Mainframe and the Huey P. Newton Gun Club, two groups fighting police brutality and advocating for the rights of black gun owners. Some of the work included coordinating meals for the homeless, youth picnics, and self-defense classes. But that's not what interested the FBI. Now, family, I'm not going to read the entire article. I believe I have read enough for you all to get the gist of this article and the reasons why I bought it up in the first place. By the way, shout out to all the people who have been sending me all of the awesome precepts that are being found all over in the sealed portion, in the Third Testament, in the Old Testament. People have just been sending me (laughs) precepts and verses. People who understand last week's message and they've been bringing it out. They've been sending me these verses and they are everywhere. Thank you, family. Thank you, family. I'm not going to go back directly into that topic right now because there's no need to. We know what the scriptures say. We're not going to beat that dead horse. But family, definitely check out check out this article or watch the documentary. The links will be in the description and probably in the comments as well. Now, family. Now, family. Moving right along. Let's talk for a moment about respect. Where I grew up in the South, respect was everything. It was ingrained into me that I was going to have to respect certain individuals. I had to respect my parents. I had to respect my teachers. I was shown over and over and over again different various levels of respect. And somewhere along the line, it became very important for me to be respected by others. You see, where I'm from, in my community, amongst my peers, you didn't have to like me, you didn't have to love me, you didn't have to even speak to me, but respect, respect was the minimum. You were going to respect me. You might not have respect for everything that I do. And I was okay with that. But you were going to respect me. Just as a young man. In the city. And if I felt. If I felt like. I was being disrespected. Then I was ready to fight. Now, I want you to understand the reasons why I thought this way. It is because of the culture that I came from. Like I said, I grew up in the South, in Louisiana. I don't know what it was like to grow up on the West Coast or the East Coast or the Midwest. I don't know. So I'm not sure how many of you had similar experiences living other places but what I am trying to stress to you is how important respect was when I was growing up 
and how that was a cornerstone for me in the way that I thought and the way that I carried myself. So family, this morning someone left a comment on one of my YouTube videos. And like they have done many times, and I have done the same thing, they said at the end of their comment, much love and much respect. So then I got ready to respond to them. I did respond to them. And at the end of my comment, I was writing much love and respect back to them. And then the Holy Spirit said, don't do that. Then the Holy Spirit said, respect fuels pride. So I did what I always do whenever I get a direct word from the Holy Spirit. I took out my Bible. So family, if you don't mind, today we're going to forego. We're going to forego. Isaiah 28 verses 9 and 10 and Psalm 119 verse 104 and 128. I know we always go there and let me tell you, I would go there right now. However, I don't want to lose any momentum. So you can write those verses down. Isaiah 28 verses 9 and 10. Psalm 119 verses 104 and 128. We all know we get our understanding via the precepts. But right now, I want to show you what I was shown this morning. Actually, for y'all, it would be yesterday morning because I'm recording this the night before. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter four, and let's read verses four and five. That's the book of Genesis, chapter four, and we're going to read verses four and five. It says, and Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. Family, let's look at this word, respect. Let's look at this word respect in the Strong's. It's Strong's number 8159. It's in the Hebrew, so it's H8159. And when you look at this word, right off the back you see that it is actually used, it is actually used as the word respect a total of three times. But it is also used as the word look, the word dismayed, the word away, the word depart, the word dim, the word looked, past tense, the word regard, the word spare, and the word turn. So once again, we have a situation where the translators just pick the word that they thought sounded the best. When you read the definition of this word in the Strong's, here's what it says. It says, a primitive root to gaze at or about properly for help. By implication, inspect, consider, six, compassionate, be nonplussed as looking around in amazement or bewildered, depart, be dim or dismayed, look away, regard, have, respect, spare, turn. So that is how the Strong's defines this word. The problem is they were guessing. Now I told you they used this word a total of three times as respect. Let's go to the third time they use this word as respect. Let's go to Psalm 119 verse 117. That's the book of Psalms. We're going to go to Psalm 119 and we're going to read verse 117. It says, Hold thou me up 
and I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. You see, all, all of these words being used as respect, they sound right to us because of the culture that we live in and because of the way that we think. Now let's go to the book of Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter 10 and let's read verses 33 through 36. That's the book of Acts chapter 10 and we're going to read verses 33 through 36. It says, Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God? Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. <laughs> Uh-oh. Verse 35. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Messiah Hamasiach, he is Lord of all. Ladies and gentlemen, what did we just read? This scripture just said that we are all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, if he was a respecter of persons, then you would have to go to a certain individual to get the word. Then you would have to go to a certain group to get the word. <laughs> Look at what verse 35 says. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. And we know that's not talking about being afraid, but that's talking about reverence. Are you hearing me? You see that word, that word respect, that word should have been translated as reverence. That word should have been to revere, or I'll even go as far as to say regard, which is one of the words that they use for that word. But one of you may be asking the question, well, what about the word respect? Is there a word for respect in the Hebrew? And the answer is yes. Let's go and read the verse that actually has the word respect written in it in the Hebrew. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 19 and let's read verse 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 19 and we're going to read verse 7. It says, Wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. What? <laughs> no respect of persons? Let's look at this word in the Strong's. This is Strong's number 4859, Slovakia, 4856, 4856 in the Hebrew, so H4856. That word is maso or maso. And look what it says. Look, this is exactly how you know right here. This is how you know that those other verses can't be dealing with respect. This is how you know that the Most High didn't look at Abel and have respect for him and his offering. Because watch this. The definition of this says partiality as a lifting up respect. What? Wow. And look, this is the only place in the whole Bible where this word is used. You see, if anything, if anything, we 
are supposed to be lifting up the father. It shouldn't be the other the other way around. It shouldn't be the father lifting us up because that is backwards. Even when you look at these letters or these characters in the Hebrew, it breaks down to say the characters for Ma, Sha, and Ah. These characters mean water, sucking, and power. Are you hearing me? Why would the father need to suck any kind of power from us? No, we should be sucking power from the father. But understand, understand what men teach. Men teach you to lift them up. Men teach you to suck from them. Men want you to respect them. You see, they don't want you. They don't want you to have that relationship with the Father where you can actually get everything you need directly from the Father. Oh no, they want to build up respect. Why? Because it says it right here. Look at the definition of this word. 4856 it says partiality as a lifting up don't you know what lifting up is this is pride that's what that is pointing to so now I understand why the Holy Spirit said don't put that don't put much love and much respect so from now on and I've already started doing it from now on Instead of putting much love and much respect, you'll be seeing me put much love and much shalom, much love and much peace. You can keep all the respect because I don't want you sucking nothing from me. Give that to the father. You understand? I don't ever want to be lifted up in pride. I'm just a little son. So family, from this point forward, much love and much shalom. <laughs> All right. Now, I know a lot of y'all might think that that is just a small, trivial thing. But how many of you know that words have power? And over here, we are coming against any type of witchcraft or sorcery. That includes spelling with their spells and all of that nonsense and garbage. We're not fooling with that. So if the Holy Spirit says, don't write that, then I'm not writing it. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I had absolutely no idea, no idea how beguiled I was with the very idea of respect even since I was just a child so now respect is no longer the minimum as a matter of fact there is no minimum that I can impose on anyone else there is only my minimum concerning everyone else and my minimum is to love so family the Holy Spirit gave me that because this lesson, this lesson is about the way forward. You see, family, it's a clear message. The way forward is to be walked without clinging to pride. We have to learn to walk in humility. Family, let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, and let's read verses 11 and 12. That's the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 11 and 12. It says, And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. 
and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt rise up foundations of many generations, and shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. What? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what have we been learning? Have we not been searching the old paths, the old ways? We are repairing the breach. We are restoring the paths. Are you hearing me? Let's go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 and let's read verse 16. That's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Wow. Isn't that something, y'all? Isn't that something? We all know there are those among us. There are those among us who we have been giving this message to. And now they are saying, we will not walk therein. And that's okay. That's their free agency. You guys remember on my community tab, I posted the pictures the other day. And I posted a picture of a squirrel. And this squirrel had long ears. It was a beautiful gray squirrel with, with a white underbelly. And it had long ears. Let me tell you something. What that squirrel feels is he feels that in order for you to rest with the Lord that you need to listen that means you need to have ears to hear and what did we just read in this scripture it says stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls you see you can read Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 or you can go to Colorado and go up on that mountain and listen and that squirrel will come out <laughs> because there's precepts in life now we just read we just read a moment ago about restoring the path. Let's go to the book. Well, let's stay in the book of Jeremiah. And let's go to chapter 18. And let's read verse 15. That's Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 15. It says, Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths to walk in paths in a way not cast up do you understand ladies and gentlemen do you understand why the path has to be restored in the first place because the people are no longer walking in the ancient paths they're no longer walking the way that Adam and Eve walked are you understanding? Are you grasping this? I told you, I had that Holy Spirit intervention today because the Holy Spirit already knew I was going into this lesson. I was going to record this lesson tonight. So there had to, there had to be this intervention to make sure that I would stress the point of we must not walk in pride. But we have to be meek and humble. 
Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 11. We're going to go to Matthew, chapter 11. And let's read verse 29. Matthew 11, verse 29. It says, Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. What? You shall find rest unto your souls? We just read that you're going to find rest if you walk in the ancient paths. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You mean to tell me that the ancients knew something about the Messiah? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, take heed. We should all be searching for the old ways. Are you hearing me? We should be diligently seeking the old paths because the way forward is also understanding our beginnings are you hearing me we're not going to go there right now but how many times have we gone to the verses that say that the works of the lord are one eternal round it's a circle what's that old saying you can't know where you're going until you know where you've been there's truth in that so, where is that information? Where is the information about the old ways, the old paths? Let us go to Malachi chapter 3. And let's read verse 16. That's the book of Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. It says, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Are you understanding, family? Are you understanding why we go so deeply into the books of remembrance? We're not going into these books to lift ourselves up. We're not going into these books so that we can be deep. We are going into these books because Jeremiah 6.16 says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. And Malachi chapter three says that a book of remembrance was written, written for who? Written for us. And what do the books of remembrance teach us? The books of remembrance, they teach us how, how to be close to the earth. They teach us that we should huddle together the righteous and that we should join together and form righteous communities. The books of remembrance, they teach us about Shabuah. Now we have done lessons on Shabuah before, but right now, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what was established by the Council of Elda. We're going to take a look at the seven foundations of Shabuah because this is the way forward and it is very, very old. It is very, very ancient. Let's go into the Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek. And we're going to go to chapter 9. And let's read verses 84 
through 92. That's the Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek. Chapter 9, verses 84 through 92. It says, And the council of Elda has established the seven foundations for the covenant of Shabuah for any holy community. And the first of the seven is that they must covenant to love and join with the Urkadeshi and look to them as companions and listen to the Urkadeshi just like I listened to the squirrel and listen to the Urkadeshi which is like the bride of Matzah the lamb and sustain the sanctity of marriage and this is on the righteousness side of the covenant tablet and it is shown on the inside curl of the man symbol on this side and in order to be able to hear and see with the Urkadeshi you must not walk in the way of the people what didn't we just read about walking in the way of the people in the last lesson when we were talking about what were we talking about we were talking about the weapons <laughs> Didn't we just read that in the Dead Sea Scrolls that we should not walk in the way of the people? Let's keep going. You must not walk in the way of the people of the world, but reserve yourself to walk and live with the spirits of life, Matzah, put in the Urkadeshi. And second, Salakia, and the second foundation for the covenant of Shabuah in community is that you must do whatever it takes in your repentance and discipline to know me because I am the man who took all the children of my father with me to enter into all the forms creation has taken. And remember, the woman was taken out of the man, she being the feelings of his heart made flesh. So the inside curl is the mother and the outside curl is the father. And if you guys are lost when it's talking about when it's talking about these curls, it's talking about the tablet. It's talking about the tablet and if you if you read in this chapter, you can actually see pictures of the tablet. Matter of fact, even on the page right before, you can go and you can look and you can see the tablet that is being shown right there. Anyway, let's continue. Verse 86. And the third foundation is you must study and learn the truth of how I fulfilled my vision as Savior and Redeemer of mankind. The top half of the first bar is swelled up, indicating the fulfillment of my vision. You see that, y'all? Messiah, even he had a vision. And we can read all about that in First Chi. As a matter of fact, we have, we have a lesson on it. It is called, I can't remember what it's called right now, but we have studied that very lesson. Anyway, let's continue. The top half of the bar, Salakia, the top half of the first bar is swelled up, indicating the fulfillment of my vision. And you must covenant to love and worship my fulfilled vision and rejoice in it and grieve with me in my burdens and sing anthems of joy with me in my successes and you will thus become a part of my vision with me and give me glorious names and call me forth to meet every need what <laughs> and the fourth foundation is shown by the bar that is swelled up at the end which represents your fulfilled vision and you must do whatever it takes in your repentance and diligence to know your own vision. So you may fulfill every delightful anticipation the Father has concerning you in the day he created your spirit. And when you do this, in the end, your vision will be equal with mine after the seventh ad advocacy as we stand together in the light and presence of my Father.
Wow. And the fifth foundation for the covenant of the community is you must covenant to live your life in such a way that you provide for your little ones and your people and the conditions that will safeguard them to experience moments of bonding with Anoki said while living with the sounds of life and the glories of seeing purity in one another. For all such encounters are written into the book of life and all who are found at the last day to be written in the book of life will enter into eternal joy in the presence of my Father. And the sixth foundation is you must make the languages of repentance and glory the foundation of every aspect of your lives. And that means learning to first know how to listen to the Spirit of the Lord and also learn how to see the guidance of the spirits of life in the Urkadeshi. And in this way, you will join with and be embedded in the ever flowing and bursting forth of the sounds of life. And if you do this, you will inherit eternal life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I have been trying to teach you. This is what I have been trying to impart into you. And the seventh foundation that you must covenant to fulfill. You must bequeath to your children a knowledge of righteousness and salvation and teach them how to feel with the Spirit and know when they are forgiven and made pure by their repentance and teach them to love repentance and seek reproval wherever it can be found. And if you do all these things, you will receive a fullness of the gift of life, and any community rule must be set in place to specifically support and sustain these seven foundations. And these seven foundations must be graphically described to every person preparing to take the covenant and it must all be clearly stated by them in the moment they take the covenant of the community and it is not a light thing to be toyed with but a lifelong commitment and learning how to build on these seven foundations will allow my father to establish the religion of Shabua among you for it is the religion of my father Ladies and gentlemen, in the future, we will be breaking down each and every one of these seven foundations, one lesson at a time. And we will be providing plenty of plenty of plenty of precepts. And why is that? Well, because Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. <laughs> Family. I pray that y'all were edified today. I pray that you all would continue to join me as we restore the old paths, as we learn to walk the ancient paths, as we find the good way and walk therein. I pray that you understand that our father is not a respecter of persons meaning he is not partial because of this person or that person he's not going to give all the goods to one person understand that he does not want you to suck from the tit of a man but he wants you to come to him for nourishment. That's the milk. That's the meat. All of it. With that said, family, I love each and every one of you. The water. Kai. 
all praises to Anoki said, Bahashim Matsa, the Lamb. This is little son Sabal Nabaya, saying, Much love and much shalom.